Hi guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome to Christmas Advent Day number one. I'm going to be uploading videos every single day in the run up to Christmas as a sort of YouTube advent calendar for you guys. In today's video we're going to be drawing some black fur so I'm going to show you tips and techniques and the layering process on how you can render this colour fur. We're also going to be drawing white fur, brown fur and red fur in a four part mini tutorial series. So if you want to see this black fur tutorial and all the other fur tutorials then head on over to my Patreon page as there will be the full real time tutorial over there for you for just $5 per month. So let's get into today's little tutorial. We're going to be drawing black fur and for this I use three main colours and I try and stick to these regardless as to whether I'm drawing warm toned or cool toned black fur. So they are warm grey one, cold grey one and dark sepia. So I've listed them in the way that we're going to layer them. So we're going to go from the lightest first to the darkest. So what I do first of all is just apply a general base layer all over the area that I'm drawing. In this case, it's a small circle, which I've done just for demonstration purposes, but I usually work in small patches on a portrait. So I'll color in one patch and then move on to another patch. So I just lay down the warm grey one all over, just generally shading in the direction that, that the fur is going in. I then add a secondary layer of the warm grey one just to fill in any patches, just to make sure the tooth of the paper is completely covered in that first base layer. I then go in and add a layer of the cold grey one and I like to add the cold grey one over the top of the warm grey one just to give a nice even neutral balance between the cold and the warm tones. I also feel that this gives a really nice base tone for the black fur as well. So then we go in with the dark sepia for the remainder of our layers. I divided my circle up into two semicircles to show some different techniques. So in the left hand side we're going to add the mid tones and then build up to the dark layers and in the right side we're going to add the dark layers and then build in the mid tones. So you can kind of see the difference in the technique and how it will affect your final drawing. So in the left hand side all I've done is just added a nice layer of the dark sepia making sure the pencil's really nice and sharp and just added a layer all over so I get a nice even tone. I've then gone in with a second layer of the dark sepia and this time instead of shading what I'm doing is just making small hair lines or just lines with the pencil to mimic the fur. I'm always making sure that I work in the direction of the fur. I don't really want to go in an odd direction as it can make the fur look really unrealistic and unnatural. So once I've added in some lines all over you can see that there's an inconsistency in tone all over the left hand side there. I then go over with another layer adding some lines in with the dark sepia pencil once more. It's always important that you have a consistently sharp tip to your pencil so that you can get even tone and even coverage of the layers. So when I'm adding this fur layer by adding small lines all over, I am concentrating on where the dark places might be in my reference photo. So on the bottom of the circle you can see that I've made it really quite dark for when you've got those dark, rich, really, really midnight black areas on a pet portrait or wildlife piece. And then at the top of the circle you've got some lighter tones. So where I've got those darker tones I've added more concentrated strokes of the dark sepia. I've also used a little bit more pressure throughout the pencil so that you can get those really dark tones showing through. Where you can see the darker clumps at the top of this half of the circle, that's where I've also concentrated a few more strokes. And then the mid-tone area, I haven't added as many pencil strokes. I've also gone over the mid-tone area with one of the warm grey one pencils, just to lighten it up and add a little bit of contrast in there. So now we're going to jump over to the right hand side and this time we're going to fill in our darker areas first and then go back to the mid-tones. So to map out where those darker parts are in this side of the fur, I've gone over with a further layer of the cold grey one, just pushed a little bit harder just so I can map out where these dark patches are. Then I've gone straight over with the dark sepia pencil and this time I've gone straight in and using some fur lines. 
It's important when you're creating your fur lines not to keep them going all in the same direction. You want some that are going slightly off the direction that your fur is pointing in. If you've got a fur line which is going horizontally, you don't necessarily want to add it vertically, but you just want it at a slight angle to the horizontal fur line. That just gives it a more natural look and makes it look really realistic. So the dark areas I've gone over with the dark sepia first as you can see and I've just gone over with a couple of layers just adding these lines down just to make it as dark as it needs to be according to the reference photo. I always suggest using a reference photo when drawing realistically as it's easier to see where everything should be where the highlights and shadows should be according to the contours on the face and such. So once I've added in those dark parts on this half of the circle, I'm then going in and adding the midtones. So to add the midtones, all I've done is just shaded over the entire area, just working in the direction that the fur is going in. Once we've got a nice layer down of the midtone, I then go over with a further layer of the dark sepia to add to the midtones, but this time I'm working more in fur lines as well as shading. To lighten up some of the midtones, I've gone over with the cold grey one pencil and just use this making lines and making sure that I blend out into the dark areas and into the light areas. So I'm making sure that there is a really nice blend across the dark and the lights. I don't really want any harsh lines because that's not really what you find when you're drawing realistically. You don't have harsh lines unless the subject is in some kind of harsh unnatural light. So you want to keep everything smooth so you want to blend your light colours into your dark colours and your dark colours into your light colours. That will give you a really natural look. To add some highlights onto the black fur I like to use a luminance white pencil and this just creates some luminosity into the fur. You can see as I'm adding it down it looks really really nice and light on top. So I'm using a sharp pencil once again and just working in lines and again blending from the darks into the lights. So that's it for this short tutorial guys. As you can see that using two different methods basically wields the same sort of results. It just depends on which way you like to work as to which one you use. Thanks so much for watching this video guys, I'll be back tomorrow with advent day number 2 and a mystery video for you guys. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and tick that bell icon so you can be notified of each advent video as soon as it's released. And I will see you tomorrow, bye!